Hey guys, welcome back to my channel for today's video, which is going to be another sports photography workflow. But as I mentioned on my last video, this is going to focus on um, a workflow that's more common, I guess, with professional photographers working for agencies and also photographers who may be doing uh, large events with thousands of raw images to use, such as a wedding photographer or maybe a festival photographer or something like that. The primary two pieces of software I am using for this will be Photo Mechanic and Adobe Photoshop. Uh, Photo Mechanic is a brilliant piece of software. I've got a few videos already on my channel about it. Um, if you're brand new to it, maybe check out the one where I just discuss the initial setting up of Photo Mechanic and some of the preferences that you'll need to cover off um, because that does impact very slightly on this video. So the steps that I'm going to need to box off in this workflow will be um, ingesting the photos or importing them if you want to use Lightroom speak uh, and then basically picking my best photos. This is a, a process known as culling. Um, caption those images, renaming the images, edit, editing the images, and then putting them in a folder ready to be sent to the agency by email or FTP or cloud-based uh, software, however you do it. Um, it is a little bit clunky initially if you're not used to it. As I say, if I am um, doing my usual, just working for the football club I work for, then I will simply just use my simpler Lightroom workflow, but this one is certainly um, a lot more detailed. It allows you to add more information to the files and the file names, etc. So uh, let's stop waffling and jump straight in. And the first thing we need to do is ingest the photos that we want to work on. To do that, you go to File and Ingest. If you've got Photo Mechanic open and it is set up in your preferences to do so, when you insert a memory card, it will automatically trigger this ingest box. Um, and in this source paths section up here, disks will be the one selected. However, I'm going to ingest from a folder, so I'll keep it selected as folder and go to add. And then on my desktop, what I've done is create a folder. I've created two actually, but we'll come to the other one uh, a little bit later. I've created this workflow demo folder. Uh, and then we also need to define a primary destination so you're importing these images from a memory card or a folder and where are you importing them or ingesting them to i've created another folder on my desktop called workflow ingests for this purpose if you are working for a football match on a football match for example you might call this manchester city versus chelsea or whatever the game is that you're covering uh, a couple of things on this dialog to take note of. You can apply IPTC metadata template to all of the photos you're ingesting. So this will be when all this is pre-populated. And often, uh, or nearly always, if you're working for an agency, big or small, they will send you an IPTC metadata, um, a caption, basically pre-populated, ready for you to use. And you just click load down here, select that file, and then it would pre-populate all of this. I've left this empty for purposes of this demo. The only thing I've populated for um, to make things a bit clearer later on is this description or caption. And I've just put a really generic um, X in the English Premier League match between Man City and Chelsea at the Etihad Stadium. No idea why I picked that example because uh, I've never shot either of those teams in my life. But um, there we go. So you close the template. And then what you can also do at this point is you can rename all the photos you're ingesting. You can do so sequentially with a, a number if you wish to. I'm not going to because I'll do that at a later point and I'll show you that when we get to it. So for now, I'm just going to ingest. There we go. Very quickly, the contact sheet fills up with the images that you've ingested. Now, I have only brought in a handful from the game I covered on Saturday, uh, which was in League 2 at Stevenage versus Tramia. And um, I've just selected eight of those images. Now, if you're pitch side and you're wiring live to an agency, I say pitch side, it could be court side or track side or whatever, um, then you're likely doing this incrementally through the game anyway. So you might not always have um, hundreds of photos at this point, you might have a smaller number. Now, one of the great, and I, I touched on it in the intro, one of the great things about Photo Mechanic is the ability for it to build really quick previews, which makes it perfect if you're working with raw images primarily when i'm shooting sports i use jpeg only that is a personal preference i do know guys who will shoot with raw um, photos whatever they're doing if you're doing a wedding or a big festival maybe you're more likely to be shooting it with raw images all the time now the reason photographic is so good as you can see all these kind of thumbnails here if you click the magnifying glass 
it almost instantly builds a preview of the image you've just clicked on to, to look at. Now, that will that obviously loaded really quick when I clicked it then, and it is a JPEG. However, if you do that for a um, RAW file, it will be every bit as quick as that. And the way it does that, which leaves like a Lightroom for dead, by the way, the way it does that, every camera, when it takes a RAW image within the file, the RAW file itself, there is actually a little JPEG image in there. And that is so that when you look at the image to review it on the back of your camera, on the, on the little screen, it isn't saving your raw image there, it's saving you a little JPEG. And what Photo Mechanic does is it gets that JPEG and it uses that to build these previews. So it's really clever. And it, what it allows you to do, once you've clicked preview that magnifying glass and you've got the images up here, by using the cursor keys, so left and right on your keyboard, you can really quick cycle through the images you've imported. Now, if you imagine you're working with loads and loads, um, that makes this process so quick. So let me explain a little bit about what we do next. These are all the images. Let's say um, there's only a few on here that I want to keep. What I'll do is I'll click that magnifying glass, I'll go through and I'll do what's called tagging. And what you're basically doing when you tag is you see this little white checkbox under each of the images. By tagging it, that will um, have a tick in, okay? What you can then do is we can then manage those um, images further in a second. So what I'm going to do very quickly is run through these photos as if I'm at pitch side and I'm going to cull what I don't want. And again, by cull, what I actually mean is I'm going to select the ones I do want and work with them. So hit the magnifying glass and let's rifle through them really quick using the cursors. So let's say we want to keep that one. So if we just hit the key, um, the T key on your keyboard, you'll see it's tagged it. So over on the left here, see this little tick has emerged um, or appeared. As we scroll through these, I'll tell you when I click T, look how it tags it with that tick underneath. So let's go for that one. So there you go, little tig, tig, tag, uh, tag tick has, has appeared. And let's pick another one. Uh, this guy with the poor busted nose there. So we've tagged three images there. We can come back out of this. And now what you can do is you basically get rid of all the others from the view by uh, clicking um, tagged so this little drop down here where it's got all select tagged instead by doing that what you've done is you've just brought up um, only the photos you're filtering the view only by the photos that you have um, selected so what we need to do next is we need to rename these photos because you'll see they've got different file names all utterly irrelevant to anyone except me and even to me they're pretty irrelevant it's just what the camera stamps them with so Reasons you might want to or might need to rename your photos when you submit images to an agency, certainly the ones I've worked for, they will want the event name within the um, file name. They might actually give you a really specific file name to use, by the way, um, but they want the event name, which in this instance will be the two teams playing. And then they want to have a sequential number on the end of each one. Right. And the reason they do that is if you um, file 30 images with them, let's say numbers one through 25 appear and then number 26 and onwards oh sorry 27 and onwards don't they can get give me a quick shout text or call me and say rich number 26 is missing and you can easily see that And there's probably a ton of other reasons as well so once we've made our selects here what we need to do is we need to rename these images so let's select them all so on a mac it's command and a and it's control and a on windows if we go to file we can go to rename and Again, this is just pre-populated with a previous game I've done. So let me just get rid of this and explain what I'm doing. So I'd go Stevenage underscore versus Tramia underscore Rovers. They're the two teams playing. And I do another underscore. And what you can do, if you tick the sequence box at the end here, a checkbox, it adds this little sequence um, short code onto the end. And what it's doing is it's previewing here beneath um, that this image will become Trammy Rovers, uh, Stevenage versus Trammy 006, and then we've got 07 and 08, and so on. So it's sequentially renaming those um, along with the renaming string that you've specified. Now, why is it starting at 06, you might ask? That's because the previous time I used it, um, I must have done five photos and held it there. So if we go onto the set variable, you'll see it gives you the number here. Just hit reset. It'll take it back to zero one, and again it's previewed underneath to say one, two, and three. And don't forget, if you're pitch side, you're going to come and do this a couple of times 
So it's actually going to continue, um, as you've just seen there, continue numbering from four next time I come in. So let's hit rename. And then you'll see underneath it's change the file name. If we click the preview tool, you'll see at the very top 001, 002, and 003. Okay, that easy. At this point, I click the I button on it. And what that does is it brings up that caption, that ITPC metadata, which will be pre-populated. And using your code replacements, again, I've done a video on code replacements, that easy to use and set up, and it saves you a ton of time. But using code replacements, you can then just very quickly, that's not the player I've just tagged, by the way, I'm just using this as an example. You can very quickly build up your um, captions into the images. I think I've got... Um, Things like shot, have I? Yes, shoot to go. Build, use those code replacements to build up the captions. Okay, one we're done, great. So what we've done so far is we've uh, called and in, we've ingested, we've called and selected our best images and we've renamed them. What about if these are fresh out of the camera, if you've got edits to do? If you've set Photomechanic up properly with your preferences, which would be on, up here, on Mac for Photomechanic and then preferences, you can set a default editing application. And what that means is if you then click on a photo and go Command and E or Control and E, it's going to boot that photo immediately out into your editing software, so Photoshop. See how quick that happened because I had Photoshop open. Then you can crop the image, save the image, and then great thing here, when we go back to Photo Mechanic, watch what happens. That photo is updated. So the guy, there's another guy in the shot, don't forget, he's gone because we've updated this image and it instantly records that back within Photo Mechanic. So um, let's do another one on this dude. If we crop this, let's do a really nasty crop. So it's just kind of, there you go. We've lost the feet out of it. Then we go file and save. And we're done. And you see there's reflected here. So what we've already done, this is super quick. We've we've ingested, we've called, we've renamed, we've captioned, and we've edited, right, already, super quick. So if I go back on my desktop into the workflow ingest, which is where these photos have been brought in, you'll see all the photos are still in here. So these are the ones that we called out. Don't forget, we didn't use any of these at the top with the IMG file name. If we scroll down, we have got the three with the correct file name, 01 cropped, 0, 02 cropped, and 0, 03 as it was, all exist, but they're all in the same folder as the images we've called out, which is not very helpful. Really quick way of fixing that. So come back in, select all again, so Command and A or Control and A, and then what you're gonna need to do, I think it's Command and Y, which is copy images. And what you're gonna need to do, hit copy, and then basically you can create a new subfolder, um, Let's call it to submit because these are the images I'd submit to the agency. Click open. And then when we go back into this top level ingest to them, we've got a new folder and the images that we've edited and renamed are there ready to be sent off to the agency. And it is that quick and that easy. So without me um, kind of going into that detail at each step, let me very quickly reset and let's do it again for a quick different set of images in real time so you can see how quick this workflow actually is. Okay, so let us go again from the top. So file, ingest, find the folder you wanna import from. Um, again, this will be triggered by the memory card ordinarily. Uh, which one? Workflow demo two. Uh, keep the primary destination the same. That'll create a subfolder within the workflow ingest folder uh, for these images to go into. I'm not renaming them at this point. I am applying the metadata template. Go ingest. Here are the images um, that has pulled through and let's just very quickly get the previews up. Um, so most of these are from a different game and one we actually won, which is um, much more uh, enjoyable from my perspective. There's a lot of duplicates in here. I apologize for that. So I'm just gonna tag, just cycling through, pressing T and we'll take that one as well. We've tagged quite a few. We go to view and tagged and there are the ones we've tagged. Let's get rid of these ones that have snuck in there. Okay. Uh, and just reset that. So view tagged. There we go. So we've just got these ones in here. We go in and caption it. So that's Josh Hawks celebrating. So you should use your, um, your uh, code replacements for this. 
And there's Josh celebrating again. I don't know his number or I would, but if you go Selly1, I know that that's a caption that I've got set up. Okay, all good. Let's rename those. So rename, and we'll call these uh, Ecstasy versus Tromia Rovers. So versus Exeter underscore City. And we're going to keep the sequencing in there. We're going to reset it to one. We're going to uh, hit rename. Are we ready? Yes, we are. There we go. They're done. And then um, what we need to do then do is let's edit one. Which one shall we edit? Let's, uh, let's edit this one. We go Control and E. We're going to boot the file into Photoshop. We give it a really tight crop. What we're happy with. We save that. Oh, it was a bit of a mess, wasn't it? Uh, there we go. That's what happens when you're rushing things. <laughs> Let's just crop that as that. Save that image. Done. And then let's. Uh, we could do some more edits, but we won't. Happy with those. Rename them. Edited them. And now we need to copy them into a new location. Workflow ingest. Let's do uh, submiss submission two. Bang them in there. And then very quickly, if we can find that submissions folder again, which is stashed away on my desktop, submission two. There are our four images that we've selected, captioned, and edited. So it is super quick. And the next stage from this, these look a little bit pixelated on here. I can assure you they're not. It's just how the Mac is rendering the um, thumbnail. So there we go. When we preview, it's nice and sharp. Um, yeah, the next step will be to send these images over to your agency or, or whoever you're working to. Now, quite commonly, FTP is used. And if you don't know what FTP is, uh, it stands for File Transfer Protocol, I think. But essentially what it is, is a way from getting a folder from your computer to a different server, for example, uploading it to a server. Websites are FTP'd in old school money. If you like, they're FTP'd onto a web server, which will be your host. So with images, we can FTP these images away as send that we can either do that from within Photo Mechanic. So select all, file, FTP photos as, and your agency or your newspaper, whoever, will give you their server information um, for you to connect to and seamlessly send them out of Photo Mechanic here. Alternatively, because we've now got them in a neat little subfolder of just these renamed and edited and captioned images, we could use a different FTP application. Plenty of free ones about FileZilla is a good one. Or we could use FileZilla to fire these photos across um, to the agency. And that's it. That's, that is the workflow. As you can see, it's a little bit more involved. I think the end result of this is better than my simple one because this, um, I can rename photos in, in Lightroom, but this allows me to rename them, pick the best ones, caption them, and do very quick edits all very quickly and seamlessly. And then it kicks them out into an alternative location. As I've said previously on my last workflow video, the primary reason I usually use my simplified Lightroom um, based workflow is that that allows me to do multiple types of exports with watermarks on some and high res ver versions that are clean in other instances. So that's it. I hope you've liked the video. I hope it's been useful for you. Please fire any questions below into the comments. I'd love you to subscribe to the channel if you found this useful. I don't expect you to, obviously, but it'd be lovely if you did. And please check out some of my other videos and uh, leave a comment with any suggestions or any topics you'd like covered in future. That's all for now. See you soon on the next video.